This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 79 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Horse Husbands Revisited. This episode of Stable Scoop comes with a warning. This episode consists of four horse husbands sitting around talking about what it's like to be married to horsewomen. If you are a horsewoman, consider yourself warned. This is a testosterone-filled zone. On the other hand, if you are a horse husband, sit back at, with an adult beverage and enjoy. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections brings the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Visit them at equestriancollections.com. Welcome to the Stable School, where weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the Stable, it's every week. We'll bring you the news through hell, hot water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. Sit on down and laugh till your poop calls. It's time again for Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. This is Glenn the Geek, and I have been a horse husband for over 22 years. This is Rick Bergeron, and I've been a horse husband for 16 years. Uh, this is Jamel Allen, and I've been a horse husband for a little close to two years now. This is Rich Moorhead, and I've been a horse husband for 10 years, um, <clears throat> but we've been together for 17, so I guess that was a, something else other than a husband. But yeah. <laughs> 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 you were, you were a sucker horsey. at that point, I think. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everybody to the Stable Scoop Radio Show. As you can tell, this is a little bit different episode than we normally do. Helena has the night off tonight. We figured that she didn't really qualify as a horse husband. She'll be back next week with the Desperate Horse Wives episode, where the wives will be here chatting about how terrible we are. But tonight we get our shot to talk about them. And as I mentioned to the guys here, last year the Horse Husbands episode was the most downloaded episode that we did of all 400 episodes on the Horse Radio Network. So uh, welcome. You'll be heard uh, by listeners in about 37 countries, actually. And it's just a lot of fun. We did the Valentine's episode last week, which is all sappy and lovey and all that stuff. And then we, we thought, you know, every year we'd go from the, the sappy and the lovey to just uh, downright brutality the next two weeks where we just bust on each other. So, and, and, you know, as horse husbands, we have a lot to talk about. And we never get to really sit around and talk to each other about all the things that we go through as horse husbands. So that's what this episode is all about. We did one last year. It was episode. 27, if you want to go back and listen to that one as well. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce everybody. Uh, Rick Bergeron has been a friend for a while, comes up here to Lexington. Married, You married into the horse thing, didn't you, Rick? Yes, I absolutely did. I had no idea what I was getting into. Yeah, and you still <laughs> wish you didn't, huh? Oh, I don't know about that. It has its <laughs> up and downs. <laughs> <laughs> now, your wife uh, runs a farm called uh, Wright Lead Equestrian Center, correct? That is correct. And you're where? We're located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's a nice place to be. Now, uh, uh, it, it depends on what time of year, but uh, right now it sort of is. Yeah, a little hot and buggy in the summertime. Yes, it can be. Now, what kind of uh, horses, what's she do with the horses there? Well, my wife is mainly an eventer. Uh, she travels uh, usually throughout the Gulf Coast region competing. Uh, she does um, also can do some therapeutic riding. Uh, she was at one point uh, a um, NARA certified instructor. She teaches some basic dressage, some pony club uh, beginner stuff. She's actually starting to get into a little bit of judging here and there and uh, just a little bit of everything. You know, we're, we're sort of working at a... Um, beginner to medium level, I guess, if you will. Um, we're just trying to grow the sport here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as much as we can. So now you're, you're, do you ride and stuff now, or have you really gotten into it, or what kind of horse husband are you? <laughs> I've got the breeches, I've got the boots, and I only ride when I'm forced to ride. <laughs> <laughs> so she forced you to buy the breeches, too? 
Uh, well, actually, she bought them for me. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, we don't usually buy breeches for ourselves, if uh, b- voluntarily, anyway. Uh, well, I-, I won't say I don't look good in them. But I just don't <laughs> buy that often. <laughs> 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 All right, Jamal, you are uh you're actually the husband of a successful inventor out of Canada, right? Uh yes, sir. And you've been married only two years. You're like a puppy here. <laughs> yes. I mean we were dating prior to that obviously, but yes, uh I am the youngster here in the crowd when it comes to marriage. So now we went down in Florida. We had a great time at the Succeed event down there uh, in Florida about Christmas time, I think it was. And that's where we met. And I, I said to you then, I said, I just have to have you on the show because you guys are are, are a great couple. Now, were you a horse person before you met her? Uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, I really didn't know that much about horses. Um, so it was an experience, you know. Uh, seeing all of her horses, which she, you know, has to do every day, try and get everything down, and it's still a work in progress right now, so... uh... <laughs> well, we should mention who we're, who we're talking about, and that's Holly Bennett, the international inventor, who has done very well uh, up there in Canada and is a super nice person, too. And she just got to do something very exciting. Tell us about it. Uh, she was just recently in Torchbearer in the uh, Winter Olympics, so... Uh... It's pretty exciting to see her represent her country in that way and uh, have the crowds cheer her off. So I, I really enjoyed seeing that and uh, such a joy for her. That's like a once in a lifetime thrill. Absolutely. It's been a lifelong dream for her to do that. She, you know, she entered a competition uh, probably in the 80s to try and do it. She was the runner up, so she just fell a little short of that and was disappointed, but never gave up the dream. So. I'm just glad she was able to fulfill that. Now, is she shooting for the next Olympics? Is that a goal? Uh, yes, that's a goal. Um, so far, uh, she's been, of course, riding uh, a lot of horses, but you know, her main horse is uh, uh, Gin and Juice, Virginia. She uh, likes to call her. And, uh, yeah, so that's the way it's looking so far, but keep our fingers crossed. So. Now, has she goes. brought you over to the dark side? Are you riding, too? Um, well, funny you mentioned that. Uh, I thought I was uh, pretty experienced. You know, I've been on a couple of those uh, tours, the horse riding events, and, uh, you know, I got on her uh, her horse that she went to the 2004 Olympics with Livingston, or uh, Hank, as he's known by, and, uh, you know, that was a big mistake. You know, I should have uh, you know, let her give me a couple lessons, but I got on, and... Uh, <laughs> And I thought you'd be able to hold the reins, like, you know, like that's where you get your leverage. Oh, no. Um, Squeezed my legs together, and Hank just took off. And he said, I needed a lot of ice that night. Uh, (laughs) She was still laughing at me. You know, she was laughing at me when it was happening. And then, of course, later on, she would go snicker. You know, but, uh, yeah, that was my first and probably close to last, you know, riding experience there. So we'll see if she can convince me. (laughs) And we have with us also Rich Moorhead, who is who is the husband of a very popular person here on the Horse Radio Network. Has been on several of our shows, and that's Julie Goodnight. Welcome, Rich. Yeah, good to talk to you guys. Now you are you're actually involved in the ski world, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I run a, a small ski area in Colorado called Monarch. So um, that's what I do best. Uh, certainly, um, a lot better than I ride. <laughs> well, how long have you and Julie been together? You said 17 years? Yeah, it's been about 17 years. I've lost count. It's been so good, you know, that you know, <laughs> time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> you know, if Julie doesn't listen to this show, she's going to have Heidi listen to it for her. And, <laughs> I know, <laughs> Heidi. Yeah, I'm going to be in trouble one way or another. <laughs> it's going to leak out. Now, tell us, uh, were, you a ho- were you a horse person at all before? Well, I've done a little bit, but not much, you know. I mean, just enough to kind of hurt myself a couple times, but uh, but I've managed to hurt myself more recently. So, no, actually, I, I've um, been riding recently, oh, probably about pretty hard for the last six years. So I, I gave up my golf game and and uh, uh, took to horses. So um, I've been having fun with it, actually. You trail riding? Is that what you're doing? No, I've been doing, uh, you know, versatility ranch horse event so i kind of like playing with those cows oh cool well that's neat 
Well, you know, we should mention that Julie is uh, obviously an, an international clinician. She's very popular. She has her show on, on RFD, right? Um, right. She's on RFD for, I think, three years now. Horse Master with Julie Goodnight. Right. Did I get the name right? Yeah, it's Horse Master and yep. Husband Master. <laughs> <laughs> no, Horse Master is, is the name of the show. Well, and she does a great job, and she's been a wonderful guest here on the Horse Radio Network. We've had her on several of the shows, and she's very popular in the United States and internationally. And, and we, I just appreciate all you guys being on. Uh, we're just going to have a little fun tonight talking about what it's like to be a horse husband. And it sounds like we're all in about the same boat. I don't ride. I actually drive carriages. So, uh, But I got into it. I was also a, a – I didn't know anything about horses. I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where the Amish are. And the only thing I knew is they got in our way on the roads, and we kept having to pass them, and it was a pain in the butt. That's pretty much what I knew about horses. And then I met uh, my wife, who was an inventor, and got thrown it. When you're, as, as Jamal will attest to, when you're a inventor's husband, you get thrown into it full force because you've got to walk cross-country courses. You've got all these different things they have to plan for. You know, it just... It, and, and they have to train for three different events, and it just is, is more immersive than a lot of this, the, the other disciplines. Wouldn't you agree with that, Jamal? Oh, absolutely. I, had, <laughs> yeah, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, and if you'd ask me again, I probably wouldn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'd do it all over again. I, uh, you know, it's a lot like being in the military, you know, because your spouse is pretty much gone about 10 months out of the year, even though she's there. I mean, but for the most part, it's... Uh, focusing on writing and everything associated with that. So uh, I get a kick out of it. But, you know, it is uh, a bit tough sometimes, like I said, because, you know, going and going for that long time and then only having about two months out of the year to relax. And even then, that's not uh, uh, exclusive. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, get used but, uh, to it. You've only been doing it for two years. You, you should, you should, be, you should, <laughs> you should be in uh, in Rich's shoes. Uh, I know Julie's gone about what forty weeks of the year too. Yeah, she does about forty weeks of travel a year. So, you know, her toughest thing is, or my toughest thing is, her getting used to me when <laughs> she goes back. <laughs> <laughs> She's had those hotel rooms to herself all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we oh, well, have. I guess so. <laughs> it's, well, <laughs> we hope anyway. Um, <laughs> there, there's strike one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm in trouble already. <laughs> You're going to be sleeping in the hotel room here soon. Yeah, right. That's that's what the man cave was for. <laughs> 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 hey guys, I have a poem. We read a poem last year, and I found another one. I want to read. This will take a, uh, just a, a couple minutes. It's called "Horse Husbands" by Harold Roy Miller, and I just think that you're all going to relate to this, uh, and all the horse husbands out there will as well. So I want to take a minute and just read it. It says to all you horse husbands who have equine loving wives whose horses are the centers of your darling daily lives. I sympathize with you men. I know exactly how you feel, because I also have to endure this exasperating ordeal. You probably are the guy who bought the fences and the stalls, and the one who built the corrals and put up the horse shed walls. More than likely, it was your cash that paid for the horses you both own, but women have selective memories about this, a fact that is well known. The minute that you enter their equine-oriented domain, you instantly become a non-entity without any say or opinion. They will also chastise you severely if you fail to follow orders when it comes to taking care of their precious four-hoofed borders. They'll tell you how to mount your horse and how to position your feet, the proper way to hold the reins and sit the saddle seat, the way to brush and halter and other things they think you forgot, and you'll get a lesson in horses' nutrition, whether you want it or not. It doesn't matter if you're a racetrack jockey or a famous rodeo star. Somehow your equine skills never quite measure up to par. They live in their focused world of horses where women run the show, and any male with laid-back attitude interrupts the natural flow. They expect a guy to cowboy up and oh. They can scold if he doesn't take care or ride or clean stalls in the Arctic cold. They don't tolerate insubordination. They want to make sure you understand 
Though you may be the king of your castle, in the corrals you're a hired hand. Now a wise man will act like he heard every word his sweetheart has said and not stand there fuming with anger or with a question mark over his head. A smart man won't growl or groan, making her sulky and downhearted. They'll just give her a kiss and say, okay, honey, then do it the way they started. And that got me in trouble many, many times because I would listen to what she said and then I'd do it my way anyway. And it's, it, you're, in tr- you're in bigger trouble then. Yep. Wouldn't you you're agree? Still, you're still going to get it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no and we've all done do. it. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, you, you, you're in a different situation there, Rich. You've got an international clinician who is out teaching people all about natural horsemanship and things. Do you ever do it right? Well, you, you know, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, you know, if I don't, then, you know, I get this look, and, um, boy, you know, you don't want to get that look. And, you know, she's really patient with everybody else, but somehow I get pushed a little bit, a little bit harder. Well, you know, they say you shouldn't take lessons from your wife, too. I tried that, and it, it failed miserably. <laughs> so, I've done that. I've done, I've done it once. Did you? <laughs> It failed miserably, didn't it, Rick? <laughs> well, it's one of those things that I figured I'm never really going to spend enough time to be good at it, so I might as well just not even get into it. <laughs> I'm good enough, good enough being in the background with grooming and getting all the students and the kids set up and the photography and the cooking of the jambalaya or whatever else needs to get done. And we've heard good stories about your jambalaya, Rick. <laughs> I'll have to bring the pot up there one time. Yeah, right? you're going to have to. We're, we're, we're hearing stories, but I haven't ever got to taste it. <laughs> now, Jamal, you're an international eventer's husband. Do you, do you, are you for, are a forced groom, or do you have to do, do the grooming duties a lot? I do it as much as I can, but uh, mostly uh, our groom Italia is there. But, um, no, I'm pretty much one of the lucky ones because uh, I'm a certified massage therapist, so most of the time I work on her or her uh, horses. So that's my designated duty or default duty, for lack of a better term. Well, if you're going to have a duty, that's a darn nice one to have, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, no, there's really no complaints, you know, uh, in that department. So I'm pretty Jeez, lucky we, I have something at least to fall back on. We all did it wrong. We should have taken lessons from Jamal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Now, does Julie ski? i got to ask you that. Uh, does Julie ski, yeah, Rich? Fact, that's actually, uh, we actually met at the ski area, and she's actually a really good skier. In fact, we just got back from heli skiing um, outside of Telluride. So, yeah, she can get around. She's pretty good. Wow. Well, that's kind of neat. Yeah. That's kind of neat yeah. because that doesn't happen too often where, where your horse wife actually has another hobby that they do and enjoy. Yeah, exactly, and and that's why I figured I'd go ahead and try to ride. And one one of her great lines is, uh, "Be careful what you wish for," because sometimes she gets home from a clinic or something, and I'll be wanting to go to uh, you know some kind of versatility ranch horse competition, which of course she goes to and cleans my clock. But <laughs> she acts like she's too tired. <laughs> It really pisses me off, though. I work so hard at it, and she just goes in and, and uh, tears me up. <laughs> you could probably still take her on the slopes, though. What's that? You can probably still take her on the slopes, though. Yeah, yeah. I can. I I, I hang with her, but, you know, she, well, yeah. uh, she says she's actually pretty good. Well, good. You know, we have to remember that they are athletes, you know, so and, yeah. and and unfortunately they can, you know, it's so funny because I always said I married a woman that was stronger than me. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty much true. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely has I think much she's better balance. Definitely... Go ahead, Rick. I was oh, saying I was you definitely afraid. have better balance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Jamal, do you Not have uh, ho- hobbies outside of uh, horses? Um, it's on polar opposite ends here, but I, uh, I like shooting weapons. I was a Marine before, so I'm pretty good at that. And, uh, I like coin collecting. None of you, you know, make fun of that because remember the uh, first hobby that I liked. <laughs> I was just going to say something and then I actually thought about the first hobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamal, I got to say too, you did some announcing down in Florida when we were there and you did a great job. You're a good announcer. 
Well, thanks. It was a, it was a really good time. It was uh, really for a, a great cause. So I was just happy that was, you know, part of that. So look forward to doing that again if I'm invited. So. Well, you, you did a nice job. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, got some questions for you guys. Uh, and we'll just, a couple of them, I just want to take one at a time here. So, Rick, uh, what's the hardest part of being a horse husband? Uh, no downtime. That's one of the things. Pretty much when you are a horse husband, you live it 24 hours a day. There's always something that needs to be done. And typically, it's stuff at the farm. You know, kind of like I mentioned, you know, the farm here, we've got, um, oh, a little bit over a dozen students, about 10 horses, and the wife and I pretty much take care of everything out there. So there's fences to mend. There's horses that need to have uh, attitude adjustments. There's students that need attitude adjustments sometimes. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's really a rewarding thing. You know, you get to see the interaction between the horses and the students. And, you know, sometimes you bring home the ribbon, sometimes you don't. But everybody does their best, and they always try to do a little bit better next time. How about uh, how about you, Rich? Uh, you know, I could almost ditto that. You know, we don't have a, you know, a facility quite like Rick's, but... Um, but you know, there's always there's always fence. There's always you know, horses manage to break anything. I don't know. I don't care if it's made out of steel. You know, it's, yes, it just breaks and they break it. So, you know, I spend my off time just trying to keep you know keep keep everything working and you know keep the keep the manure spreader going and uh, you know keep fences up and you know there's just a lot of upkeep. So I think that's pretty tough. And, and you know, of course. You know, she's out on the road, so she comes back home, you know, thinks I've been, you know, doing something fun all that time. Well, you know, Rich, i got to say that uh, you talked about manure spreaders. How many of us have fixed the chain in the manure spreader in the winter when the sucker is frozen solid? <laughs> or the thing is, it's always full when it breaks, and you have to empty it by hand. And, and then you have to try and fix the chain, and, and it's just frozen and miserable, and you're cussing and swearing the whole time. I've done that several times. Come on down to Louisiana, Glenn. We don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, right. <It's, laughs> at least it's soft there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But we've all done And how many times, too, have we all walked colicky horses at 2 in the morning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're covered from head to toe with mineral oil. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's always on the night you're going out. The one night you want to go out, you have something planned, and the horse colics every single time. Uh, as long as you don't have to put on the big glove, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal, no, you've been only your... you've been only two years here doing this. What's uh, what's what's the hardest part for you? Um. Mostly, like I said, it's the amount of time that you're apart, you know, because yeah, I really like, I mean, yes, we're buried and everything, and I'm probably going to get some browning points. So that's what I really mean is I, I really enjoy spending time around but, uh, You know, she's you know, going for her goals and trying to uh, accomplish going back to the Olympics in uh, 2012. So it's, um, I'd say that's the main thing, you know, trying to find time to, that, uh, that common time to, you know, really enjoy each other. So. But, uh, yeah, I'd say that's it. Okay. Well, all right. Now, what's the best part of being a horse husband, Rick? Ooh, I kind of answered that almost. With I think you part. did, actually. <laughs> I, I think you kind of did. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I'm an environmental manager at a large industrial facility, so in most of the time during the day, I'm sitting behind a desk and, really working my brain and at the end of the day you know it's kind of good to get out at the farm every now and then and, and actually work your body a little bit do some physical activity whether it be working with the horses or mending the fix, uh, fences or sitting on the tractor for several hours just trying to get the grass cut you know it, it's, it's kind of nice to get out there and be out in the open you know there were days i actually enjoyed cleaning the stalls just for that reason because it's mindless yep. um and, and and you could just get away. You're like getting away from the world, and you're just doing your thing. And uh, uh, and I, I didn't didn't mind it all that much on some days. And then there were other days. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How about you, Rich? Well, I think the best part is you know getting introduced to horses, and then um, you know just trying to get 
just get better at it and having someone there that, that really, honestly, she is a great teacher. So she's taken me a long ways in a short time. So, and then when we go to a, you know, got competition together, you know, it's, it's really fun to have her there because she kind of coaches me along the whole thing. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, I just like to be around horses, I, you know, not having been in, around them that much before that, you know, they're just, they're, they're cool animals and, uh, and it's just a lot of fun to to do that stuff. Yeah, granted, it's a lot of work, it's, you know, but uh, you know, most time is worth it. And Jamal, I'd say it's going to the events and uh, taking part in the camaraderie. There aren't too many sports where, that I've seen at least uh, where you, your competition you actually work together when you go on the course. Hey, you know, this turn or this jump right here. Make sure you take it like this or that. I found that pretty weird, you know. It's usually uh, <laughs> you're trying to undermine your uh, competition, but the equestrian world is, uh, seems to be a, a higher code of ethics. I may be displaced in that, but man, that's what I've seen. Well, you I really know, like that. I think you're right, Jamal, and that's especially true in eventing. Um, yeah. And, and that's what you have experience with, and that is especially true in eventing. And there's two sports where that, I would say, that is the, at the highest level, and that's eventing and endurance. Um, and that's partly because, you know, these people are trying not to die out there. So mm-hmm. they sort of have to work together, you know, for, for the benefit of the whole sport and their own bodies. Um, do you find it tough, Jamal? I had a tough time sometimes watching my wife do the cross country course. Uh, you know, I, I cringed and closed my eyes a few times. Do you do you have that problem? Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's sometimes where I can't make it because uh, because of work, and uh, usually those are the times when I receive a phone call from someone else. Mm. And uh, you know, the horse that she's uh, currently on, uh, Junior Juice, sent her to the hospital. I think three times so far. And, uh, you know, when we first started dating, that's where I got a phone call. It didn't take me very long to get up there to her, but, you know, she turned out being fine. But uh, I think that's that's the one part that I don't look forward to, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, it is it is what it is. She enjoys doing what she's doing, and uh, you can't, uh, can't take that away from somebody, even with the risk. It makes you feel good in what yeah. you're doing. And, uh, do you know, there's hard. one thing. One thing I always tell Michelle and all her students, usually before they go out on the cross-country course, is that we know gravity works. We don't have to test that theory. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to keep the horse between you and the ground. Absolutely. Um, hurts a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, we've all experienced that in person, too. Yeah. Now, now um, you know, I think, I think that what you, what you said, Jamal, is so true, and... You know, I've, my wife has broken every bone in her body at least once, um, and I've seen her do that a couple times, and, and it doesn't get any easier for us as husbands to watch that, whether it's your wife or your kid. Um, and I don't know if you've experienced that so much with what Julie does, ha- have you? Oh, yeah, she's, uh, you know, uh, she uh, broke a lot of colts, you know. Oh, that's right. And, um, yeah, yeah, so... So yeah, in fact, uh, you know, watching her on a, a young horse, you know, can be a little nerve wracking. You know, because sometimes I'll be sitting there at the uh, round pen, kind of watching, and I've seen her get bucked off, and I've seen her get kicked out of the stall, and you know, she's a heck of a lot tougher than I am. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Mine is too. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a wimp compared to her. Yeah, I mean, there's no comparison. So. Uh, not so, to mention yeah, all the medications impressed. and things they'll be able to whip out of the tack trunk to be able to put on bruises and sprains and scrapes and cuts and <laughs> oh exactly <laughs> come, home, come home all wrapped up in vet wrap trying to figure out what happened to them and the horses will be gushing blood and I'll be like passing out and she's over there just taking care of it you know but yet if a human gets hurt they all run for the hills <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true too. Yep. So what? Tell me about uh, t- what's and I, I, anybody can jump in here. Does anybody have what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened, or the funny stories that you have from from your years being around the horses and the wives? This is the one that's going to send you to divorce court. So um. yeah, I've got plenty of material if you guys want to hear this. Oh uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, <laughs> when I first met Holly and you know started courting her, yes, I said courting. In uh, 2005. And we're not going to argue because you're a Marine with guns, so. 
<laughs> you can court her all you want. <laughs> uh, she was uh, in the arena training uh, Jenny Brannigan at the time, and uh, you know, at a certain point, she would uh, say the word "ho," like "ho," and I'm thinking she's calling her a ho. You know, and they, you, know <laughs> you know, she did such a good job. She's like, you ho, but she was saying ho. And then, of course, I uh, realized what that was. I felt like a bit of a boob, but, you know, that was... Uh, <laughs> you really were a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> Jarhead, Jirene, yeah, I've heard it all. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sort of figured after about the, you know, fourth or fifth time she wasn't, you know, being... Or anything, so you know it was pretty funny. But, and and just to come to Jenny's uh, Jenny Brannigan's defense, she is anything but that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. She's a fantastic equestrian. So, yeah, yeah, she's actually right, co-hosts. <laughs> she co-hosts the eventing radio show uh, that I that we do on the network uh, with us as well. So she's she's a good kid. So uh, anybody else have some funny ones? Well, I don't know how funny it was, but. <laughs> Um, I guess it was funny later, but um, my friend, when I, I was actually courting Julie, too, and I went down to her place, and uh, and there was about five, six head of horses in this one pen, and I was standing in the alleyway, so she decided she would run him right towards me. And now, I didn't know that she had done it on purpose. My friend ended up, that was with me, told me later that she ran down in the alleyway on purpose just to see what I would do. <laughs> he was going, why'd you oh, do that? <laughs> she said, oh, just to see how he would react. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you know what I did. I mean, I leaped over the fence like I was being chased by a bull. But um, <laughs> anyway, I thought that was kind of funny later to hear that. Wow, she's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, you know, she, she likes to test me. <laughs> and I was the first one, apparently, to see if I was worthy. <laughs> so did you send her to the, the uh, worst slope possible on her first time out to see if she's worthy? Hey, I like to try and pay her back when I can, you know. <laughs> Get her out there when it's on me. So. <laughs> Rick, anything for Louisiana that you, you you care to tell about Michelle? or the? Uh, the... Uh, I'm trying to think of something offhand that would be PG. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be edited out, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, nothing. Nothing really comes to mind. You know, I mean, it, it, it's it's always every time you go to a show or any time you get an event, and I mean, with us, usually there's a gaggle of girls that are going to a show. I mean, we, we'll usually have, you know, four or five girls along with Michelle, and we've got horses in tow, and there's, you know, horse paraphernalia everywhere, and everybody's wearing, you know, fuzzy muck boots and these weird, you know, uh, of uh, you know, just galoshes type sheet. I mean, it's just, it's always fun. Somebody's forgetting something. Somebody's not doing something right. And Michelle runs a very, very tight ship. So, you know, we do have a lot of fun. And there's, there's a, a lot of uh, small little stories, I guess, or little things. But, yeah, nothing that, that really comes to mind. We just usually try to make the shows a lot of fun. And, and you know, I'm usually out there with my camera taking pictures of all the girls at the shows. And, you know, so we we can have some fun with some of the pictures afterwards, but uh, you know, it, it's it's just always fun. You know, that's what we really try to make every event we go to. Well, that's cool, and that's well, that was you know one of the my favorite times. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little sappy here. One of my favorite times in the barn actually was after. Well, this is a guy's favorite time anyway. Is after you're all done, and you're closing up the barn, and you you hear all the horses eating at night. It's dark. And all you hear is the horses eating, and they're all happy. And that was always my favorite time. Now, that could be because beer was shortly after that. <laughs> yeah, I meant you were done with everything. <laughs> exactly. Beer, the recliner, uh, warm house. <laughs> right. You're telling, you're telling me you snuck the beer in the barn, too? <laughs> uh, oh, never. I've never done that. <laughs> Jamal's drinking now, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to relax, you know, for for the show. You know, we we visited last year with a couple of things that I called. Uh, uh, truisms about most horsewomen, um, and I, there's a couple that I think we have to revisit again because I, I just think they're so true, and it's something that we should take a look at every year. And one of the biggest ones um, 
is that uh, they have to keep the barn spotless but could care less about the house. Is that pretty much true with you guys? <laughs> You're really uh, trying to I dare say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, do do any of your do any of your wives cook? Because that's another one; they don't cook much. Does uh, does can of soup and ramen noodles count? That's my wife too, right there. That's she, she can make meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal, I don't well, see Holly cooking Christmas very is. much. Yeah. Well, you know, Holly. Not any food in the house because. <laughs> I don't go to the store when she's gone and <laughs> end up eating out a lot. <laughs> and, and actually, if I had to wait for Michelle to cook since she gets home at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, we'd be eating at 10 o'clock every night. So there's just no absolute way that she can do that. Yeah, so we've all learned to become cooks, too. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's true. Absolutely. And Jamal, you know, I don't Holly see... Does... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, Holly does her fair share, but, you know, by the time she gets home, she's, you know, gone, of course, before the sun rises yeah, right now it's about it's almost six o'clock. So she's been at the barn for about thirteen hours an hour. So by the time she gets home, just I get ready for the next day. So we try and split that duty. But uh, I'm the uh, house husband, so that's part of my official duties. And I do uh, I do that well, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody better argue. Um. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't get fed. <laughs> And, uh, you know, one of the other ones I had here is they have secret credit cards. I was in the retail business for a long time, and I cannot tell you how many of these women had credit cards. They'd come up, and they'd say, oh, i got to use this card because my husband doesn't know about them. Have you ever caught them with their secret credit cards? No, no, I'll tell you the secret to success. You just stay the heck out of it. I just, <laughs> my, my, my check gets direct deposited, and I just don't care. <laughs> That's probably a good policy. Yeah, okay. yeah I think it is too. Uh, horse laundry, <laughs> horse laundry in the washer with horse hair everywhere. That one drives me nuts because you go to put your wash in after they've washed the saddle pads and stuff, and you always come out with your your nice dress shirt covered in horse hair. Uh, that one always drove me nuts. Um, I've got extra extra parts for my washer sitting in my laundry room now. <laughs> <laughs> Ever tried to wash a horse blanket in a regular washing machine? Right. <laughs> <laughs> does not like it. <laughs> That's true. And uh, the other thing that always bothered me, too, when we had our big farm, we had about 20 horses and, and a lot of boarders and, and not a lot of help, so it was pretty much the two of us, is the holidays. Because you, you never, it's, it's what you said, uh, Rick, you never get a day off. It just is yep. always there. No matter rain, shine, sleet, snow, holiday, or whatever, horses have to get fed twice a day. Yep. And that's that's the priority, especially, you know, as, as you know, if you're running a boarding facility, you know, you're not just taking care of your horses, but you're taking care of others' horses. And kind of like I mentioned earlier with Michelle running a very tight ship, I mean, not only do they have to get fed twice a day, but they get fed on time, <laughs> which is another very important thing. And I know Michelle, She Holly's about, what, five three, five four. She's not a real big girl. She's not real yeah. tall. Uh, no, no, she's not. She's about five three. Yeah, Michelle's uh, even. Uh, Rick's wife's even shorter than that. I think. No, I think Michelle's about five three five. Is she? Well, that's, that's about right. But they're yeah. little firecrackers, both of them. Oh, absolutely, and they've got big. Oh horses. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason Jamal owns guns. Um, <laughs> Exactly, because <laughs> yeah. Holly's you know, wicked. Yeah. Well, well, guys, I have to do a short commercial break here, and we'll 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 be right back to finish up talking about our wives and what it's like to be horse husbands. First, we have to mention Equestrian Collections. Equestrian Collections does carry tons of men's stuff. They actually have one of the largest selections of men's items that I've I've seen at any retailer. They have uh, show and casual apparel, riding boots, thermal gear, gloves, jackets. Uh, they pretty much can cover men from head to toe, and men's stuff is hard to find. Anybody that's 
uh, it, uh, that's competed in any form, really, in the English side especially, you'll, you'll know that if you have very few selections when it comes to men's uh, riding clothing. Well, they have tons of it over at Equestrian Collections. You can just stop over to equestriancollections.com, click on the men's tab at the top there, and you'll see all of the different hundreds of products that they do have. And they have a special now for everybody that's uh, listening to the Horse Radio Network. You just put in Horse Radio, all one word, in the coupon code at checkout, and you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more. That's the coupon code Horse Radio, all one word, at checkout to get that $10 off your next order of $120 or more at equestriancollections.com. And we thank, you, we thank them for their continued support of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Well, guys, uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna send a message now to the to the guys who are dating horse girls who aren't married yet, what would it be? <laughs> oh, I got a good one for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you get married, you're a groom. When you say I do, you're a groom forever. <laughs> That's pretty much true. That's pretty much true. You know, one thing we didn't talk about in last year's Horse Husbands episode is uh, we, didn't, we actually didn't talk about the, uh, the sexual side of being a horse husband. And we can't go into that too much. But um, let's just say the horses come first, pretty much. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think that's all we really have to say about that. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure I want to get into that. <laughs> Because <laughs> we all know about horses, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite what I meant well, there, Rich. But, yeah. uh... <laughs> well, I always used to ask all the guys, like, uh, you know, it's me and Hank are hanging off a cliff, and, you know, I'm hanging off on my hand, and I'm slipping. He's hanging on by his husk and head, looking at you with those doughy eyes. Who would you choose? Of course, he said. You don't want the answer to that. Exactly. Just like the Bud Light commercial. <laughs> and you know what? I got, you know, for you guys that are boyfriends and you're dating, and the horse girl says to you, don't ever say it's me or the horse, they mean it because you'll be out. <laughs> well, Glenn, let's put, it, let's, let's put it this way, Glenn. My horses get chiropractic work. They get acupuncture. They get massage. Now, I think I've had acupuncture once. I've never had massage and never had chiropractic work. <laughs> That's true. And you don't get your horse, your feet shod every uh, six weeks either, do you? No, and when I buy shoes, it's not $175 a pop either. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Every six weeks. <laughs> That's true. And, your doc- and their doctor visits cost a lot more than ours, too. Uh, yeah, especially since we fly one from Colorado sometimes. But, uh, but yeah, that can happen. But, you know, they're athletes, and you've got to take care of them like they're athletes. Now, there are some good sides of being horse husbands, and I think we've actually touched on more of those than we did last year, actually. <laughs> we've, I, I think we've kept our, our marriages intact here this year. Um, so if you have a parting thing you want to say about being a horse husband or, or advice uh, to, to those uh, young boyfriends coming into it, what would it be? Where to start? I got, um, just make sure that they travel to some great places. I mean, you know, we usually get an annual trip to Hawaii, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, that works out pretty good. And uh, some great spots out there, you know, that she travels to. So, and, and maybe, maybe you guys, Jamal has the same thing, but um, that's, that's kind of nice. I'm not sure it's real common, but... I'm lucky in that respect. So when Julie goes to Alaska, you don't go along, and when she goes to Hawaii, you do? Is that pretty much it? You, you got it. You okay. got it. <laughs> Jamal, do you travel with her a lot? Uh, absolutely, uh, especially internationally. That's always uh, the most fun, and that's what I was going to say. You know, My advice would be uh, travel, have fun while you're there, uh, be flexible because you know stuff happens. So. Um, but, yeah, I do a lot of traveling with her uh, up and down the uh, coast here. But, uh, you know, like I said, with work and all, it's kind of hard to get away. But I do go as much as I can. And, yeah, it's, I always have a great time because everyone there is so supportive of each other. And, you know, if you're out there and you're cleaning up or doing whatever, I guarantee you there's going to be uh, a husband there or a boyfriend or somebody that you can commiserate with. So you're not alone. <laughs> so, yeah, just look for the guy that looks lost. <laughs> or beat up exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah, or holding the raincoat 
<laughs> well, you know, and I would also say last week we talked about in the Valentine's episode, with, there's an age-old question, is it better for a horse woman to marry a horsey guy or a non-horsey guy? And I think we've proved that we have four of us here who are non-horsey guys that converted. So um, I, I would say that can go both ways. You can be a non-horsey guy and... I think as long as you, you, you as long as you love her and, and you know what you're getting into before you get into it, then uh, you can adapt and, and it can become the horse thing becomes part of your lives and obviously that's the case with all of us here. Well, Glenn, anybody any trainer will tell you it's easier to train the first time than it is to retrain later. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true when you think yeah, about it. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure you know what you're getting into, but. You know, you figure it out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think you realize the extent of which you're getting into it. That you, exactly. you, you know, even if you've dated for a year or two, you know, I, I just don't think you understand till you get married and you're in it for a year or two to the extent and how, how all consuming it is. It's not like putting the golf clubs up in the closet. Right. <laughs> right. The darn horses just don't like to go in the closet. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate you being on with me today, and uh, uh, we'll make sure the wives don't listen to this. We just won't let them know when it airs. Uh, for everybody else, stay tuned for next week as Helena will be back, actually, with my wife. And uh, Debbie Laux, who is Monty Roberts' daughter, will be on. Plus, somebody you know, Jamal, Jessica Phoenix, will be on talking about, they'll all be talking about what it's like to be horse wives. So, and I know you know Jessica, and I think that uh, uh, for, uh, she's also an inventor from Canada. And, and she's a real sweetheart as well. <clears throat> So they'll all be back. You can find our show notes at StableScoop.com, and you can also follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio, and you can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Stable Scoop. And, of course, Julie Goodnight uh, can be found at JulieGoodnight.com, and she has a great website over there to check it out. She does a lot of good work, and her schedule on there for touring, I, I believe, is up there. I just checked the other day, so I think that's updated now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, sure is. yeah, okay, good. Jamal, uh, you can find Holly Bennett at hollybennetteventing.com. That's H-A-W-L-E-Y at bennetteventing.com. And, of course, you can find Rick down there in Louisiana at rightlead.com. And that's a great website about their, about their farm as well. So, well, thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate you being on. Everybody check back next week as the Desperate Horsewives episode will be here. And... Uh, Hey, hang in there, guys. That's all I can say. Just hang in there, because as horse husbands, that's what we do. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Glenn. Take care. Good night. Oh, thank you, guys. That was great. <laughs> <laughs>